Hey everyone, Christian Gabriel here, and in this video, I'm going to show you Premiere Pro's new captions workflow. Welcome to Creative Bits. In my previous video, Premiere Pro still had not released the new transcribing function. However, it is here now, so let's get started with this super easy power feature. I'm going to begin with a simple clip and show you the quickest way to get captions ready for a social media site like YouTube. The first thing you do after you've locked your timeline is to go to your captions window. This is located in Window and then Text and then to your Captions tab. Side note, you can also just select the Captions workspace for a simple, elegant way to optimize your workspace for caption creation. Now in your text panel, you have two tabs, Transcript, which contains your script, and Captions, which controls creating the transcript. Let's click on Captions, and you will see you have three choices. You can transcribe a sequence, create a new caption track, or import captions from a file. These choices are fairly straightforward, but if you get confused as to which to do first, transcribe your audio or create a new caption track, it does not matter. For the purposes of this video, I'll go ahead and click on transcribe. So this is the create transcript panel, and it allows you to make key decisions on how your transcription should be created. Starting at the top, we have audio clips tagged as dialogue. This allows you to just transcribe any audio clip that contains the word dialogue in their metadata. I'll be going into power metadata techniques in future videos. The second selection allows you to transcribe single or multiple tracks at the same time. For example, if you had audio for one character on one track and audio for another character on a completely separate track, something like mix ignores individual tracks and virtually mixes them all together for the transcription. The other choices you have are to target a specific audio track. For this video, I'm choosing audio track one, since I don't want the transcription to get confused with any other tracks. The next feature is your choice of language. From this drop-down menu, you have the option to choose to transcribe into 13 languages more languages to be added in the future. The remaining features, represented as checkboxes, allow you to transcribe between in and out marks. And the final checkbox allows you to add new transcription to an existing transcription. This is a great feature for those who are having to continue an unfinished transcription. For this video, I'm choosing English, and I'll leave the remaining checkboxes unchecked. And just FYI, for most of you, everything I've set up here would be perfect for most projects in the United States. Now, before you start transcribing, make sure you are connected to the internet. Why? Your files will be sent to online servers for transcription, and then the results will be returned to your project within seconds or minutes. For those concerned about security, this is normal with almost all transcription services. If you are worried about the security of this feature, there's always manual entry. Okay, now I'm clicking on transcribe. And there it is. After a few seconds to a few minutes, I now have words populating the transcript panel. Playing your sequence will automatically highlight the words spoken. Now we have to create a captions track based on the standard you need for export. Clicking the Create New Caption Track button in your transcript panel will bring up the new caption track pop-up, and now you must choose a standard. If you are completely lost, CEA 608 captions were the standard for analog television. While this is the old standard, it is still quite popular. This is probably because the standard can be used on both analog and digital television workflows. The standard for digital television is CEA 708. This can only be transmitted using digital television. In addition to being newer, the 708 standard gives more options for how your captions appear, like fonts, colors, and more. The 708 standard also supports more simultaneous language streams. 
And that brings us to the other features in this pop-up. Stream, which allows for multiple simultaneous language streams for broadcast standards, and Style, which allows you to call up a caption style if your standard supports them. For now, I'll just concentrate on general captions output to a social media site like YouTube. For this reason, I'm choosing the subtitle standard, and then I want to make sure that Create From Sequence Transcript is selected. Press OK, and your track is finished. To create more captions tracks, simply go back to the Create Captions button. To edit your transcript, just click into the transcript window. Here, I can change the names of my characters, or even edit the text. In the timeline, I can also edit the text and change the timing and duration of the caption dialog as well. Finally, to export your captions, click back on the Captions tab and go to More Options in the upper right-hand corner and select SRT. That's it. If you wish to export your video and captions, go to Export, Media, and under Captions, choose how you want to export your captions and your video you will have the option of embedding your captions or creating an external captions file with your video. Anyways, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this quick down and dirty part two of Captions in Premiere, and thank you for watching.